Last minute, the guy gets cold feet. He doesn't tell us why. Maybe at the back of the mind, he can't make the grade. He doesn't make a fool of himself. So he finds some excuse of getting out of it. So man, so many reasons. But the woman, even if she is frigid, she'll want to have somebody to give her protection. I arrived here on the just before President de Klerk's speech. I immediately read all of the newspapers and listened to the radio, the TV, and what have you. And of course, one heard. Uh, everything about the point of view of the ANC, which is a political organization, UDF, PAC, right, right. and one heard the point of view of the government, right. and uh, this was in every front page everywhere. There was practically no mention whatsoever of the opinions of either the colored community, the Indian community, or the Islamic community, okay. and there may be okay. others. Okay. I could not find really almost even a reference to it. So, my first question on this subject, where is the Islamic community in politics in South Africa today? You see, as uh, numerically, numerically, the Muslim counts for nothing. The Muslims? We count for nothing. For nothing. Oh, is that so? How many? Because we are less than 2% of the total South African population. Oh, I less see. Than, and then this 2%, less than 2%, is divided in South Africa according to the uh, apartheid laws. We are divided in two, two major groups. One group is called Indian Muslim and the other is called colored Muslim. You see they have divided the Muslims again into two sections. Mm -hmm. That less than two percent is further divided by the laws of the country into two other groups. One is called colored, they call them Malays, they are coloreds they go as colleagues in this country according to the South mm -hmm. African laws and the other because most of us originate in India Pakistan we go as Indians so now as Indians we are shunted together with the other Indians see who who happen to be 80 percent of the population Indian population mm -hmm. so the Indian is a minority and in that minority the Indian Muslim is one-fifth it's a minority of a minority in South yeah. Africa. Mm -hmm. So numerically we don't count anything among them. So why mention you? <laughs> that, 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 that's one of the main reasons. Then the, the Malay, he's counted as a colored. So among the colored community is also a minority. Colored is a minority. It's a bigger minority than the Indian. They are almost about three million coloreds, mixed up between black and white. Among them the Malay is also counted as a colored. But he's called Malay. But Malay means he's a colored, uh, I mean he's a Malay Muslim with a colored identity. When you just say colored alone, it means a Christian colored. I see. And the Malay is a, a, a Malay colored. You know, for racially he's a colored, he carries a colored identity card, mm -hmm. but religiously he's a Muslim, so they call him Malay, and the other Muslims here we call us Indians. So as such now, the Malay will have to start voting according to that colored group whatever their votings are, you know, so they have this party and conservative party and nationalist party, so they start voting for them. And among the Indians they have the solidarity party and what, uh, all mm -hmm. NP, whatever they call them, they vote for that. So in other there is no other way that we can make our presence felt. But the Muslim, we believe that we have solution to the problems of South Africa. Which way? You see, when there's an identical situation, that is prevailing in South Africa at the moment, where there is a huge black power and there is a huge white power, and they are in confrontation. They both are playing a game. I hope that you know something good comes out of this. There's some sincerity on both sides, and there is peace. Because if they both start going warring, then the rest of the community, we small people, will all get smashed mm -hmm. in this battle of the giants. Mm -hmm. But now the solution is. An identical situation prevailed in Medina when Muhammad went to Medina from Mecca, you know, when he had to make his flight. When he reached Medina, in Medina there were two tribes, Aus and Hajraj, these are the names, Aus and Hajraj. And they were also warring, like here the black upon black, the black man killing black man because, you know, you belong to a different political party, mm -hmm. the killing is going on continuously. Mm -hmm. Similar thing prevailed among the Arabs, one tribe killing the members of the other tribe over little, little things, until Muhammad set his sacred feet in Medina and he offered them the book, the Quran. 
This is God's revelation to you. This is the rope of God. This is the rope of rescue. You hold this and be saved. So the Aus accepted Islam and the Khajarat accepted Islam. They held on to this rope and peace prevailed. So Islam has a solution to the problems of black and white because this is only, is, the people, there is a tug of war is going on. What can we get more? The white man wants to get the maximum from the black man and the black man wants to get the maximum from the white man. It's natural. But now to do justice, we said, you see, both the people, they need Islam. The African and the Africana. Because Islam is the only religion which tells us, it said, look, we are all human beings from the same father. And a common form of worship that we get together. In the house of Islam, when you go even now, that you'll find that the African Muslim, the Malay Muslim, which is the color, the Indian Muslim, and an occasional white Muslim, they're all praying together. But that does not happen in the churches. It's the Dutch Reformed Church. They have a Dutch Reformed Church for the whites, separate. For the Dutch Reformed Church for the colored, separate. Dutch Reformed Church for the Indian, separate. Dutch Reformed Church for the African, separate. They are all divided. Though you have carried the same label. Same thing happens with the Catholic Church. The Mosuto Church is different from the Zulu Catholic Church and is different from the Colored Catholic Church. And this is the general practice. Linguistically they are all separated. So still you feel that you are different from the other fellow. In the House of Islam, wherever you come from, like when I come to Geneva, the mosque, I am at home. The guy who might be leading us in prayer is, a, is an Arab. But it doesn't make any difference. I go to Nigeria. The African is leading me there. And in Tanzania, there's an African Imam. It doesn't matter because the form of worship that I'm used to is the same. Whether I go to Indonesia or India, Pakistan, wherever I go, there is a common denominator which Christendom cannot produce. There's no common denominator. All right. In this, you are your vote at this point then is not going to be that much significant. Significant. All right. So in what's going to happen, is there anything, just to have one word of economics, whether there was a still a free enterprise system or whether it was nationalization and total socialization with a slight communist overtone, does that make any difference to the Islamic population? Community, community. It will make a big difference. And so what would you be for? Because we will go for free enterprise. Because as it is now, you know, there was a time when even the young people had certain ideals about Russia. Mm -hmm. And we can see the whole thing has crumbled to pieces. Yes. Because the thing is unnatural. You see, our wise men were telling us that this is unnatural, it can't stand. There is a law at work. And according to that law, this thing can't last. Mm -hmm. It lasted a long time, 70 years. But after 70 years, the thing has got to come to pieces. So he says, now you have an example to go by. This was your goal, the only perfect example you had of communism is falling to pieces. China is opening its doors. So now you want to experiment again. He's a fool. The man who wants to taste fire himself, he wants to burn his finger to find out where the fire burns. He's a fool. I said, learn from other people's experience. He said, look at it. Wherever they have practiced this communist system, in, in, in Mozambique, what has happened? In, in Tanzania, go and visit the place. I visited yes, the place. Yes, I did. I've been, I've been there twice, is it? Tanzania. And I was telling that anybody who wants to opt for that system, give them a free ticket, a holiday. They said, go to Tanzania and go and spend three months and come back. And then you tell me what, what type of system you want. Whether it is Mandela or anybody who talks about that system, I says, give them a free ticket to Tanzania and let them come back. Uh, with the that economics, and that's all we'll touch on that. So you, yes. this community would opt for the, the free, enterprise for free enterprise system. Enterprise. Groups of the UDF, uh, ANC, do any of them have any particular um, attitude toward Islam that would compare, for instance, I brought one of your uh, folders here. Yes. Uh, there are some things that, that uh, you say about the the Zionists or the Jews, right. which are very, very, very strong. Yes. And before we speak about that, I would like to ask if there are any of these other groups or the Christian groups who.